Hello everyone and welcome to our online uh, demonstration of Luna EMG. Uh, today I would like to show you a short presentation at, at the end of the presentation, just some feature of the device that I think are quite interesting and would love to share with you. Okay, but first let's start with a presentation. Uh, Luna EMG is a robot for both neurological patients, but also for orthopedic patients. Uh, we use it also with oncological patients or with the kids. Um, and the main feature of the device is um, the EMG triggered movement. Um, this is uh, the, the most unique one because we use the EMG activity to assist with the movement. Um, that means that patient even with the slight activity of the muscle is able to work very actively. Let me show you that on the patient. So you can see this is a spinal cord injury patient with some activity in her upper, in his upper limb, uh, but without visible movement, right? So uh, what we would like to do, we would like to take this activity and change it for a movement. And here's a patient working with the device. Uh, you can see we've put the electrodes on his biceps um, and on other uh, ones as well. But here we are using the EMG from the biceps. And whatever he is active, he's above the threshold line, we are able um, to, to see that activity on the screen and the device is helping with the movement if he is active enough. Um, good. And why this is so important? Um, this is important because only the active participation uh, contributes to significantly higher um, activation of the sensor network. And uh, this is uh, comparing to the passive movement. So we always want the patient to be active. And if there is no movement, sometimes this is just hard, right? To work that way. But here, this is possible. And um, with Luna, the active participation can be easily achieved and uh, the patient is able to move. And also why repetition matters. Um, the large dose uh, of practice um, may be required to uh, produce the lasting neural changes and to optimize motor control. And we've seen that on the device that, um, for example, if we work with the patient, uh, we're able to go with the shoulder extension, for example, um, 60 repetition during 10 minutes. This is possible with the flexion and extension of the shoulder. Um, and the study shows that it's usually around 32 repetitions per hour where we work with the stroke patient. So this amount of repetition might be not sufficient enough uh, to, um, to gain the, and the neural changes, to, to gain um, neuroplasticity changes. Um, yep, yeah. and what else we are uh, using as approach in our device? So, uh, as I mentioned, the neuroplasticity, right? So, through a lot of repetition of the same movement, we want to change um, the, 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 the neuroplasticity, we want to influence that. Um, and we want to also uh, work with our patients uh, through motor learning. So that's uh, how we teach the patient, uh, where we show the patient how to contract and relax certain muscles. Um, then uh, the patient is actively learning how to perform the movement. And this is how we achieve the results even after one session with the patient, because then the motor learning is uh, occurring. Um, obviously, there are certain uh, indications uh, for to use the device and there will be muscle force, it will be muscle coordination that we can improve or range of motion that we can improve. This is all uh, possible with the device. Uh, there are assessment tools that we can work um, uh, with the patient and assess the range of motion, muscle force, uh, proprioception. This is all also included in the software. And um, there, is, um, uh, there are different uh, features out there. So as I mentioned already, the EMG assisted movement, uh, but there's also passive movement. There is uh, only, for example, uh, EMG biofeedback that you can also use with your patient and or different kind of resistance exercises. 
And as I mentioned before, there are some assessment tools that you can use with your patient. Uh, there are different extensions uh, to work with the upper limb, the lower limb, the steering wheel. This is something also that I can hopefully show you live. Uh, we can work with the lower um, limb as well. So uh, as you can see, the device is not only working with, with the certain uh, limb, but it's actually, you can work with the whole body, right? So, so with the upper limb, with the lower limb, with trunk, you can use EMG uh, electrodes to work with different kind of uh, muscles, for example, even with the, the facial muscle. So this is uh, something that you can uh, use as well. Um, we uh, try to work uh, by ourselves with patients as well, just to gain a lot of experience ourselves. And for example, we had this stroke patient here uh, that had a frozen shoulder and it was very painful. And he was working uh, twice, three times per week with the device for an hour. And we've been working on a lot of things, but one of them was the uh, shoulder extension and flexion and shoulder abduction and adduction, right? So here are examples on how he was working with the device. So here was the passive movement, but also he was working with the EMG activity with some resistance exercises. This is all what's going on here during the sessions. And uh, you can see the, uh, the difference. Um, this is before two, two months of working with Luna and after two months. And uh, we were kind of comparing how the, the range of motion has changed because again, there was a lot of pain out there and uh, the patient has issues with, with flexing or, and abducting the, the limb. There was still, uh, there's still a lot of things to work with, but there was uh, improvement out there definitely. And uh, we had a, this, those stroke patients working with uh, a lower limb. So they were working on the uh, activity of their uh, rectus femoris, of their hamstrings, using the, uh, the EMG trigger movement. And uh, the, the improvement was also visible uh, during walking, right? So uh, this patient started working with uh, Luna and uh, he was on the wheelchair at the beginning, but at the end of the six weeks um, uh, work in the clinic, that was, uh, he was already uh, walking independently. Um, and other a stroke patient who was working more on his upper limb um, before he was four months in the hospital and nothing was uh, changing. And then he started working with Luna and he could uh, easily see the improvement right away. Uh, and it influenced the function because he was able to make his own sandwiches and, and just pick up the things with his hand, which was not possible before. Um, also, we did our own study uh, with Luna. So we took 30 patients. Um, they were working uh, like a standard therapy plus 30 minutes per day uh, on Luna. And the other uh, group was, has had only standard uh, physiotherapy. The, the amount of time between those groups were, were, was the same. Um, and what we've noticed after six weeks um, that there was an increase of the tight um, circumference and a higher decrease in spasticity over time. So this is something you also ask a lot about like, what about the spasticity? Can I work with the device where there is spasticity? And yes, you can do that. And plus that it will decrease the spasticity, right? So you can see on the uh, graph here, how the control group, there was also improvement in terms of spasticity, but the robot group uh, was way better in that term. Uh, we've been working with Julia about a syndrome. And uh, for example, here a lot with the foot drop, the patient was very excited. Uh, that he improved during four week time. Uh, you can check out our YouTube videos in, in regards to those patients that I'm mentioning here. Um, and really was uh, happy that the, the, the rehabilitation went uh, so quickly in this good direction. So um, Luna could work with this kind of patient as well. Um, we have the uh, experience with spine cord injury patients. Um, they, this is um, a patient that um, had a car accident 
And when she was working with the device, she could really understand better how she should uh, contract, relax her muscles. Um, here you have her uh, already after three months of working with the device. So she was able to already hold a limp and control it, right? And uh, so she was working with the device in the lying position. So the electrodes here, you can see they were placed on her hamstrings. And uh, she was also looking at herself in the mirror just to have the additional feedback on how she is actually working uh, with her lower limb. And uh, also she's been, uh, she has been working in sitting position with electrodes on the uh, rectus femoris. Yeah, so um, after another uh, period of, of working with the device and with, with some standard therapy as well, she was able already to make a movement, to control that uh, movement, to even hold it in some positions when we ask, you know, go, hold. Right? So because uh, there was uh, some motor learning and neuroplasticity processes that took place. And obviously also the increase of strength, the range of motion, muscle coordination, and it all influenced her everyday life. Uh, we had patients with the uh, Duchenne muscle dystrophy. So kids working with the device where we have games, you know, this is exciting. So uh, yeah, kids, kids love the, the working with the, with the feedback on the screen. And also I mentioned already there are some assessment. For example, it's always better to use the um, objective tool to see if there is, for example, some activity in the upper limb. So the patient that we've seen at the beginning of the presentation, he um, had activity in, her, in his muscles, um, but uh, the, he, he was also assessed with the subjective measurements like the MRC scale. Um, and it was assessed with the zero point, for example, for his triceps or pronator teres. And on the EMG, we could clearly see that there was some nice activity that he was able to control. So, um, you know, just to be more precise, this is always better to use some additional tools to see if we are assessing the patient right. Um, yeah, we also have very nice... Uh, therapist uh, um, reference they would like to talk about. So we, the, the physios really see that the, using the tool improve uh, the patients, right? They can see that, that there is an uh, increase in, in muscle force range of motions, right? So this is obviously very crucial. Um, that uh, thanks to Lona, we can uh, go with motor learning and uh, because it has the biofeedback, the patient is uh, focusing on the external um, feedback. And um, it's, it's a lot of repetition, it's really intensive, so it really uh, pays off at the end. Um, we are not making mistakes while assessing the patients, and this is also uh, very important. And, uh, you know, the, the, the way of using the device, right, that there has a lot of options that you can use with different extension, working in different joints, um, using different therapy tools, uh, but assessment tools as well, uh, makes it kind of like a, you know, Swiss knife that you can work with, with your patient. And on the other hand, it's not, uh, you know, the price is really competitive. Um, in comparison to other systems on the market is, is really, really okay. And uh, other features that we have here is also that because it's on the wheels, you can work with the uh, in-bed training with your patients. Those are examples of how we can uh, adjust Luna to the in-bed patient, right? So um, this is also something you can use in your clinic. Uh, as I mentioned before, there are different games. We have four games at this point, but we keep adding them. So with new updates, you, you receive new games. Um, and you can work with different kind of extensions. So again, depending on what you want to work with. 
Uh, there are clinics that they get more devices just to have it more like a group setting. And then you have one physio who is operating more devices so you can be um, you know, more effective. And we have, uh, I guess, over 130 devices installed all over the world. So we try to gather all the experience and share with you. And whatever uh, you get the device for your clinic, uh, we come, we train, we, we try to support you with all the knowledge, all the materials that we have. Um, we cooperate in terms of different researches. So uh, if you would like to also uh, go that way, cooperate with us, we would love to do that. So you can contact us uh, via email or, or a phone just to let us know that you would like to uh, get the device for the trial, try to uh, work with the device with your patient and uh, yeah, and cooperate in a meaningful way. Um, great. So again, this is our website. Uh, join us there, uh, send us an email, contact us. And in the second part of this demo live training, I'd like to shortly show you uh, the device, how it looks like, how it works, and uh, some features that you might be interested in. All right, see you in the second part. Okay, everyone. Now let's go to the device, to our Luna EMG. And let me show you how you can work with different kind of patients. Uh, so we said during the presentation that we can work with the patient who has some activity in their muscles, but there is no movement. And for that, we will use trigger and hold exercise, which is the very unique feature. And um, let me show you how it works. So we have the EMG on the biceps, on patient's biceps and we calibrate, right? So try to uh, bend a little bit, try to activate. All right. So uh, we left the uh, upper extremity outside of the device just to show you how that works. But obviously the patient is inside of the extension. So when we ask a patient, try to make a movement, right? Like try to contract, then the extensions, extension go up. Um, so again, try to go up a little bit. Yeah. And just a slight activity. Uh, whatever it is over the threshold line will uh, help the patient to work actively, right? The device will support the, uh, the limb during the movement. Um, but what if there is no activity and no movement? Then we can always work with the passive movement, right? So the device is providing the passive motion, and we can adjust it to the patient, we can change the speed, uh, we can set the, you know, the pause at the end of the exercise um, or at the beginning of the exercise. It's uh, something that we can work with all kinds of patients. We also use the CPM mode as a uh, kind of warm up before other exercises. All right, and still we can uh, see the activity of the muscle during the passive movement. So uh, we can encourage the patient still to try to be active during even passive exercises. Okay, and what if the patient has the activity, has the movement, uh, but we would like to work on his uh, strength? Uh, we can choose uh, out of different um, exercises with different kind of resistance. Uh, for example, we have also this kind of uh, exercise, you can slide into the extension, um, where we have to, um, you know, just fulfill this very easy task that the patient needs to go to the uh, blue square and stay there for, for example, two seconds, a little bit up. Yeah. And then uh, again, the find another uh, target, right? The target is changing. Uh, so this is a very easy exercise, even for the stroke patient who has sometimes uh, troubles to understand different kind of games, for example. So this exercise is perfect and the resistance will adjust um, depending on the speed of uh, the patient movement. And we can, uh, we can work with, with our patient to increase the strength. We can uh, work to increase the proprioception. Uh, Great. And you also ask, is it hard to, you know, adjust the patient, um, how to change the extension? This is uh, quite a 
quick process. So um, let's uh, take out the, the hand from the extension. So what we do, we just uh, uh, set the extension to the vertical position and we slide out the extension. So that will be the first step. And the second step is to obviously put a different extension. Uh, for example, here we have the steering wheel. So we just kind of like slide in and that's it. And you're ready to go. Uh, with the uh, steering wheel extension, you can work on your trunk or on the patient trunk or on the upper limb in a more functional way. So, um, where we are using this kind of extension, uh, we can choose, for example, some games. We have uh, four games in the Luna device. Okay, let's slide a little bit like this. We can set the range of motion to work with our patient. And uh, we can choose out of four games. So let's choose the bubbles. And meantime, when our patient is working with the game, hopefully you can see that on the screen as well. Let me tell you a little bit about other extensions that we can use with our patients. So if the patient has some, uh, for example, food drop, that we can adjust the uh, food extension and work with the patient on the, on the food drop using um, also the passive mode, the EMG triggered movement, um, or the resistance exercises, or even games, up to us. Um, there is a very, very nice extension for the shoulder. Um, with that one, you can work on the flexion or on the abduction, adduction, depending on your patient needs. This is very crucial that the you know, patient, um, we adjust to the patient, not the other way around. So that means that we don't have to think, is my patient good for that device? We just adjust the patient to the device. Um, we also have the lower limb extension that we most of the time work with the knee in a sitting position or in, a, in the lying position. That would be this one. Um, and also a very nice uh, extension for uh, pronation supination that we can work with our device. Um, also, we always ask about what if the patient has no grip. So for that, we came up with this uh, glove that you can work, uh, you can put on the patient and then there is not an, you know, uh, he can uh, work with the extension in this kind of glove. Um, and also we have the uh, occupational therapy set. Let me bring it up to you. Um, that's uh, like a suitcase where we store different kind of extension for occupational therapy. Let me just open that for you. Um, and we have the different um, extensions for most of it. Uh, this is the pronation supination, but with different grips, like for example, um, the, the, the key to the door or kind of like a screwdriver or uh, opening the jar. So those are the occupational therapy extension. Also, uh, we can work with the um, pelvic floor. For that, we uh, get this kind of uh, electrodes um, for the pelvic floor uh, activity. And this is also how we can work with the with the device there's a special set of the different kind of uh, pelvic floor electrodes that you can order with the device mm. okay um i think that will be um, most of our extensions um, and um, there are also uh, some nice evaluation tests in the luna uh, emg so you can test EMG activity, you can test muscle force, you can test the range of motion, um, you can test proprioception. Those are special uh, tests designed to, to evaluate your patient. Uh, there are also different kind of um, exercises, uh, for example, where you can work like you would work with elastic resistance or like with weight lifting. So a lot of things that there is still out there that we would love to show you during uh, presentation dedicated especially for you or uh, you can take the device on trail to your clinic and see how uh, that fits with your patients and uh, we would love to contact you in that matter and you know uh, give us a call let us know uh, 
if you would like the device to, to, to test it in your, in your clinic. We would love to, to cooperate with you. All right, that'll be all for today. Uh, thank you for watching and let's stay in touch. All right, bye-bye.